Let me talk to you about climate change, which is, as you point out, something you're passionate about. You guys uh, did uh, some very far-reaching uh, environmental reforms when you really led the country uh, in terms of setting standards uh, and uh, uh, for the reduction of greenhouse gases. You did a, a kind of cap-and-trade system here and so on. And you, even after you left office, you were in Paris uh, promoting the the Paris Accord that Cup was 21. that was signed. You mentioned earlier that the president, you didn't support him because of his position on these issues. And to give him credit, he, he's held fast to that. He withdrew from the Paris Accords. The EPA is uh, repealing many of the admission standards that came into being under the Obamas, and now at war with California over its uh, standards. Can this momentum be turned back? Well, I think it's uh, unfortunate that, uh, that he's going in that direction. And uh, whatever the reason is, it doesn't really matter because the fact of the matter is we have to adjust to that new environment. And I tell everyone, wherever I go and uh, hold a, a speech about the environment, that we cannot rely just on one person. And we cannot rely on the federal government. And this is not just Trump. Remember that when I was governor, I fought the federal government also during my time, because the federal government said that you cannot have a waiver to regulate your own air, because greenhouse gases is not a pollutant. And I said, what? Greenhouse gases is not a pollutant? No, it's not a pollutant. So we took them to court. Yeah. I mean, uh, my own party was in control then, right? And it went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court of the United States decided that yes, greenhouse gases is a pollutant. Well, duh. I mean, what, uh, how much brain power does it take? It's, it's crazy because we are polluting the world, and it's not just about global climate change, but it is the amount of people that it kills every day all over the world. I mean, every year, seven million people die because of pollution. So if the responsibility of government is to protect people, then why would I let that happen? Yeah. You mentioned uh, that you took on Republican administrations uh, over this issue. You know, I saw a poll uh, earlier, a couple of months ago, uh, and it said the single biggest issue dividing Democrats and Republicans is this one, climate change. Uh, but David, first seriously. of all, I think that environmentalists have done a terrible job in selling this. Because the more they talk about global climate change, which no one understands what that is, you know, they talk about what's going to happen 20 years from now and the sea level rising and the polar bear and all of this kind of things. No one cares about that when you want to have a job and you want to bring food on the table today. Right. But what people care about is if you say, this is going to cause cancer. This is going to make your child have asthma early on. And as soon as they hear the health aspect of it, because that's how we sold it to the people in California, this is the difference. It has to be sold the right way. It has to be communicated the right way to the people, not talk about something that is happening 20 years from now, but today. Every day, 19,000 people are dying because of pollution worldwide. And this is an embarrassment that politicians and leaders cannot sit down and really fix this problem once and for all. Let me just ask you this. You said earlier, politics sucks. And I bet you there are a lot of people who are nodding. Uh, but it's important for people, if, if we don't have faith in, in this process of democracy, which I know you value, uh, it just doesn't work. But how do you restore faith uh, in, in, in that democracy? Because all over the world we're seeing uh, liberal democracies on the run. You, you're in Europe a lot. You're familiar with what's going on there. Give, give me a hopeful uh, a thought on this. I don't, I don't understand when you say democracy uh, is being challenged here because it's not, as far as I'm concerned. I think the liberal uh, politics is being challenged here because I think that people are sick and tired everywhere of what was going on. And you see it in Germany, you see it in Austria, you see it in Hungary, you see it in England with Brexit and all this stuff, Italy, no matter where you go. People had enough, they said to themselves, how much longer can we take of we're ringing up a huge deficit every year, huge debt, who is going to pay that off? When are we ever going to pay that off? Uh, they feel like there's too much spending going on and uh, not enough kind of people sitting down and really agreeing and fixing problems and all this. So they're sick and tired, so they look for something else. Right. 
Okay, so then it's not, it's not that the market But that's something going, else they look it's for. Some, it's something else. What they, they're looking for the opposite. So they say, okay, right. if the liberal politics didn't work, let's get someone conservative. No, let's no, but, but different. there's a difference between liberal and conservative. I mean, you may consider yourself a conservative, and I may consider myself a liberal, but when you have, for example, in Hungary or Poland, you have uh, leaders who are uh, uh, cutting back on fundamental uh, institutions, the courts, the media, that, that's a problem, isn't it? Look, America sometimes makes a mistake to always think that only our rules and our way of government is perfect in the way we deal with issues. This is great for America, but the Hungarians deal differently with the issues. The Polish deal in, in a different way. The Italians deal in a different way. So they look at our system and they say, this is totally flawed. We look at their system and we say they're totally flawed. And Congress is getting an 18% approval rating. So that is a totally fixed system. So they over there looking at us and say, that's not what we want. A fixed system where you can't get rid of those politicians. This is why I say the most important thing is not politics. The most important thing is to go and to get off your couch and to do something about it. That's what we teach our people at USC, at the Schwarzenegger Institute. We tell people, we say, stop complaining. Do something about it. Go do everything you can to unseat your congressman or your senator or whatever it is. What do you do rather than just sit in front of television? It's terrible. Everyone is arguing. I don't know what's going on in the world now. Everyone is fighting. That's bogus. That doesn't do anything. Nor does it solve a problem when you see people on television screaming at each other. I, it doesn't I, do anything. It's I, like I agree on both talking. counts. And it's probably a good time to offer an admonition to uh, people who are watching that go out and vote. There's an election. Well, both, up. but do more than that. Democracy is not a spectator sport. You got to go and fight for what you stand for. I agree. And if you believe that your congressman or your senator or your governor or your assemblyman or whoever it is, is not performing well, go out and do something about it. Einstein always said that, you know, the, the more you do the same thing and expect different results is insanity, right? Well, that's what we are doing. I think we should just give more of those jobs to women. So let's see what will happen because the guys have screwed it up so far. And that's why I welcome the idea that now more and more women are running for office because maybe they have a totally different uh, life experience yeah. and they look at it in a different way. Maybe they can solve some of the problem.